Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dr. Nisha Garg. So today we'll be solving the questions of previous year's papers. So let's start. The first question is, in the absence of Hanks balance salt solution, what is the most appropriate media to transport an Avals tooth? So the options are saliva, milk, saline and tap water. If we look at the options, first is saliva. See saliva has advantage of being a biological fluid. It provides two hours of storage time for an Avals tooth. But it is not compatible due to its incompatible osmolality, pH and presence of bacteria. Now if we see the milk, milk maintains the vitality of periodontal ligament cells for at least 3 to 4 hours. It is relatively bacteria free and its osmolality is compatible with the vital cells. And coming to the saline, Saline is uh, also isotonic and sterile and it provides a storage up to 30 minutes. Tap water is the least desirable transport media because uh, it results in the hypotonic rapid cell lysis because of its osmolality and presence of bacteria in it. So among these if we look at the options Milk is the best choice after Hanks balance all solution. So answer is B. Milk. Next question is that smear layer created by root canal instrumentation can be removed by A. Hydrogen peroxide and ethyl chloride B. Sodium hypochlorite and EDTA Chlorhexidine and chloroform D. Calcium hydroxide and phenol so if we look at the question, first we need to understand what is a smear layer. See smear layer is the surface film of debris retained on the prepared tooth surface. It consists of basically organic as well as inorganic components. The organic components can be proteins, necrotic or viable pulp tissue, saliva, blood cells and microorganisms. And inorganic component can be dentinal chips and non-specific inorganic constitutes. Now if we look at the options, sodium hypochlorite is the best irrigant to dissolve the organic portion of the debris and remove them. And EDTA is the chelating agent which is commonly used solution to remove the smear layer. So among these options, B is the right choice. That is a combination of sodium hypochlorite and EDTA is used to remove the smear layer created by the root canal instrumentation. An 8 years old patient has a permanent central incisor with a necrotic pulp and wide open apex. The most appropriate manage is to perform A. Pulpotomy B. Apexification C. Regenerative endodontics and D. Root canal therapy See if we carefully note the question the permanent central incisor it has a necrotic pulp and apex is open. If we look at the choices, pulpotomy is done in case of vital tooth, so this choice is not done. Apexification. Apexification is a process of inducing the development of root and the apical closure in an immature pulpless tooth with an open apex. So this, uh, so this choice fits the best in this question. So regenerative endodontics also is not the answer and similarly root canal treatment is not the answer. So the right choice for this question is apexification. Many months after trauma to primary incisor, the development of grayish discoloration in the tooth crown usually indicates A. Pulp necrosis B. Pulp canal calcification C. External root resorption D. Internal root resorption see, see, if we see the question, there is history of trauma and clinically there is the grayish discoloration of the crown. 
In case of pulp canal calcification, grayish coloration is not seen. In case of external root resorption, grayish discoloration is also not seen. And in case of internal root resorption, the pink tooth appearance is the pathognomic feature. And let's see the, see, there is the history of trauma. See, after trauma, there occurs a pulp necrosis in which the hemorrhage invades the dentinal tubules, which is followed by breakdown of hemoglobin. Since it's a non-vital tooth, there is no possibility of absorption of hemosiderin deposits and this gives the grayish discoloration to the tooth. So among these choices, pulp necrosis is the answer. Tic douloureux is a synonym with A. Psychogenic facial pain B. Trigeminal neuralgia C. Facial paralysis and D. Temporomandibular joint dysfunction Among these, the choice B, that is trigeminal neuralgia, is the right answer. The other synonyms of trigeminal neuralgia are Fothergill disease and Trifacial neuralgia. Which of the following is the best way to remove the remaining soft caries near pulp after initial tooth preparation? The options are small spoon excavator, burr with high speed handpiece, slow speed large round burr or explorer. If we look at the options, see high speed handpiece and explorer. These have high chances of perforating the pulp. So these are not recommended to remove the infected caries which are near the pulp. So these options are ruled out. See for removal of the caries near pulp, a large instrument is preferred. Uh, for example, in this case, large round bird or the large spoon excavator because the force per square millimeter applied to the affected area will be less in that case that will minimize the chances of mechanical pulp exposure. So the answer is slow speed large round bar. The other instruments used for removing the soft caries near pulp apart from the large round bar are large spoon excavator and use of smart prep bars. These smart prep bars are the round bars used at the speed of 500 to 800 rpm and their hardness is greater than infected dentine but lesser than the normal dentine. So while in use these effectively remove the infected dentine without harming the dentine. Smooth surface caries refer to which of the following surface? A. Occlusal pit and fissure Facial and the lingual surfaces, C. Mesial and the distal surfaces, D. Both B and C, and E. All of the above. See, if we look at the choices, see, occlusal surfaces, they have all pits, fissure, and grooves. So, the class 1 caries are pit and fissure caries. Whereas, facial, lingual, mesial, and distal surfaces of the teeth, they are free from grooves, pits, and fissures. So the caries which are present on the facial, lingual, mesial and distal surfaces of the teeth, they are known as smooth surface caries. So answer is option D, that is both B and C. Which of following carbohydrates in human diet is mainly responsible for caries? Cellulose, glucose, sucrose or glycogen? See, as we know, the caries are basically caused by acids which are produced by fermentation of carbohydrates. And among these choices, cellulose and glycogen. They are the polysaccharides which are not digested by bacteria. So these are not responsible for caries production. And among glucose and sucrose, though glucose can be fermented by bacteria, but sucrose is the most commonly fermentable carbohydrate. 
especially by streptococcus mutans which causes fermentation of sucrose and converts into the acid and this acid is responsible for demineralization of the tooth surface the fermentation of sucrose also causes the formation of polysaccharide glucan which further helps in adhesion of dental plaque to the tooth surface so these two factors these are the mainly responsible for formation of caries answer c the sucrose is the right option according to gv black the outline form of cavity preparation is the shape of cavity a after retention form b after resistance form c along the palpal floor and d along the cavo surface margin see if we look at the stages of cavity preparation the first is the initial cavity preparation stage and then the final cavity preparation stage and in the initial cavity preparation stage the first is outline form then is a primary resistance form then primary retention form then convenience form and then uh, there are the final cavity preparation stages so if we look at the options the retention and the resistance form they are obtained after the outline form is obtained so their option instead of after outline form is achieved before retention and resistance form so option a and b are ruled out now option c says outline form is shape of the cavity along the palpal floor see in outline form preparation margins are placed which depend on the extension of the carious lesion basically it doesn't define the depth of the cavity because the depth is obtained in the second stage after removal of any remaining enamel infected dentine or old restorative material so along the palpal floor is also not the option as per the definition the outline form is preparation margins that they will occupy in the final teeth preparation so the preparation margins are along the cavo surface margin so option d is the right choice that is along the cavo surface margin the setting of for zinc phosphate cement can be best retarded by a decreasing the particle size b increasing the concentration of water in the liquid c increasing the rate of addition of powder to the liquid and d cooling the glass mixing slab see now let's see the options decreasing the particle size that will increase the surface area of reaction and that will further increase the speed of reaction so this is not the right choice similarly increasing the rate of addition of powder to the liquid that will also increase the speed of setting reaction and thus decrease the setting time b is also not the right choice see the setting of zinc phosphate cement is an exothermic reaction and the cooling of a glass slab allows the dissipation of the heat which is produced during the reaction therefore cooling the glass slab slows down the chemical reaction and thus increases the setting time so option d is the right choice I hope you understood the basics of these questions now. If you have any doubts, kindly message me at the given mail address. See you in the next video with interesting topics and questions. Stay connected. Goodbye and take care.